ladies and gentlemen rise of kingdoms has revealed one new legendary cavalry commander coming to rise of kingdoms and that's none other than ho che bing i don't know if i'm pronouncing that right but this was revealed over on the official rise of kingdoms instagram facebook social media everywhere and not only did they release that this is a legendary cavalry versatility and skill commander but they also released all the skills and the expertise so today we're gonna go over everything and i'm gonna tell you guys if ho is a must-have legendary commander or not okay let's go over the first skill it says deals direct damage to a target troop with a damage factor of 2700 and if he's secondary that number is cut in half half so you definitely want to use ho as the primary here and he reduces the target's march speed by 50 percent for three seconds now this has a 1000 rage requirement but as you'll see later in the video that is actually reduced by quite a bit and boys 2700 yo you guys remember when edward of woodstock came into the game his damage factor was through the roof everyone was like oh my god his rage requirement is so high because his damage is so high and now we are just casually dropping 2700 nukes who knows how long we're like one commander cycle away from dropping 3k nukes just consistently it's nuts okay it's nuts this is an insane amount of single target damage let's move on to his second skill because this is where things start to get really interesting okay here it says cavalry units led by this commander gain 40 percent increased attack while outside of alliance territory their cavalry units gain 15 percent increased march speed and deal five percent more damage to archer units now that sounds awfully familiar doesn't it yes this sounds very similar to the second skill over on zhang yu okay he also gives you 40 percent cavalry attack he gives you 15 percent march speed except there's no condition for zhang yu so that's just generally better right it looks like on ho we're gonna have a outside of alliance territory condition and here it says that you have a chance to gain additional march speed over time now this is important because he also reduces his own March speed on the fourth skill. So if we look at Ho here, okay. And by the way, I don't know if I'm pronouncing his name, right? So I might just be calling him a Ho all video. And I apologize for that. While it's unfortunate that his March speed is conditional on him being outside of Alliance territory, I'd rather have the bonus damage to Archer units than the other condition for Zhang Yu. And the fact that Ho, if we, you know, we're going to go through the rest of his kit, he actually doesn't reduce his own March speed like Zhang Yu does. So overall this is a w and guys i just got to say right here at, at the front of the video okay i told you guys weeks ago that zhang yu was going to be power crept out of the game i told you that he was not going to be as good of an investment as he has been in the past and people were doubting me people were saying like omniarch how could you say that zhang yu is not a good investment guys i tried to warn you i tried to bro people were doubting me in the comments and they don't know that i'm always right bro i'm always trying to bring you guys the truth and look at what bro this is we're gonna go over the comparisons later but ho is absolutely a slam dunk replacement for zhang yu so rest in peace to all of the people that did not heed my warning and expertise him anyway because for open field fighting ho is definitely better now i will say he's got versatility commander so you know rallies that's maybe maybe a different story but anyway let's move on the third skill here says if this commander's troop has not been garrisoned in a building for at least 30 seconds every time their troop enters combat it will gain the following buffs for the first 15 seconds of the battle first it deals 30 percent more skill damage and second active skills cost 150 less rage to use and then after 15 seconds their troops will deal 10 percent more normal attack damage so let's break this down really quick okay first of all uh obviously until ho is in the game to actually test we're not going to know exactly what uh, conditions trigger this troop to get this buff or not okay because it says ben garrisoned okay which is actually pretty vague but also specific at the same time um like if you go in and out of a resource point you at no point have been garrisoned okay uh entering a resource point is not a stronghold it's not a city uh there's no garrison there however if you're attacked would you be considered the garrison of the resource point same thing like when you first send ho out of your city right for the very first time uh does he have to wait 30 seconds right uh i don't know right because if he's just in your city just just chilling his army hasn't even been formed yet 
well then I don't think that he's part of a garrison right I I, mean, I don't think so so I think the first 30 seconds of you sending him out of your city is fair game he'll probably get this buff right so we don't know exactly the conditions that this will this will be a restraint um if I were to guess I would say that jumping in and out of resource points probably will have no effect on this I mean technically based on the wording it shouldn't have any effect on this however if you jump in and out of a flag or you jump in and out of an allies city then you probably will have to wait 30 seconds before you get this buff now additionally it says when you enter combat so there's probably going to be scenarios where if you're attacking one target and then you have to switch to another target and there's no downside or no down time in between the battles it's all on one battle report then you've only entered combat one time to my knowledge so uh it actually seems like this skill or is going to be really good for attacking a target and then running away from fighting and then running in and hitting another target after you get the battle report as long as you don't enter any flags or alliance buildings or anything like that um we'll have to see we'll have to test this out to see you know again how resource nodes are affected by this uh and if it's worth micromanaging to go in and out of battle all the time to get this insane buff or if it's worth just letting him continue on to hit that target with the normal attack damage now the other thing here is that because it reduces your active skill rage cost uh, by 150 that means that his active skill has a rage requirement of 850 for the first skill cycle maybe even the second although I don't uh maybe the second I don't know I I can't think off the top of my head right now um but either way what this means is that 2700 nuke right there and whoever is the secondary to hoe is gonna have 30 percent more skill damage and on top of that this is going to start the rage cycle even faster and by that I mean he has the skill tree okay which means he has rejuvenate and every time that he activates an active skill he's going to gain more rage okay so it's going to start that rage cycle much sooner than the enemy that you're hitting unless it's a Zangyu or something like that so even though eventually you know his rage requirement is going to go back up to a thousand after 15 seconds of fighting uh he's still going to be gaining rage much faster than the enemy uh and he's still going to be popping off crazy crazy skill damage so this is insane let's move on to the fourth skill here it says when attacking an enemy troop cavalry units led by this commander gain 30 percent increased defense and troops deal 20 percent more skill damage boys we're talking between this and this your first skill shot is gonna have 50 percent more skill damage that's a YSG level of skill damage bonus that is an insane amount of skill damage okay uh whenever their troop defeats an enemy troop some of its slightly wounded units will be healed with a healing factor of 1500 now there's an eight second cooldown and this also doesn't reset after exiting combat they're being very specific about that now uh really quick before we talk about this the expertise is just a better version it bumps the defense up from 30 percent to 35 percent his expertise bump bumps the skill damage up from 20 percent to 25 percent okay and it bumps the healing factor up to 3000 and it gives you an autumn wind effect okay and what this says is when you get the autumn wind effect it says it resets the rage of this commander's troop all temporary buffs and debuffs and the amount of time it's been in combat so this is a brand new buff that we've never seen in the game before okay uh and it's unclear to me how this is really going to work it is clear that the intention of this is to reset the rage cost of the active skill okay so essentially what this is doing is that when you defeat an enemy troop now again we don't know does ho have to be the one to deal the final blow or does he just have to be a part of a battle report where the enemy is defeated um i suspect it's the second one because it's like that's the easiest one to actually calculate for the game right because a target could be getting so much damage from so many different sources on any given turn that it might be like impossible to know if ho actually deal like was dealing the final killing blow right um but it will be obvious to know if ho was a part of the defeat of an enemy target that's my suspicion as to what will give him the autumn wind effect um now we don't know when it says like re resets the rage of this commander's troop it, you know if he has like if his rage bars at 70 percent is it going to bring it back down to zero because if so that kind of stinks although 
it'll be nice because his active skill will now um cost only 850 again uh and then also it says all temporary buffs and debuffs does it reset the time that those buffs and debuffs have been active just like it says here with the time you've been in combat or does it just remove all your buffs and debuffs uh that is those are two very different things right if it resets the timer of them then this effectively elongates the amount of time you have a buff which is good and the amount of time that you have a debuff which is bad okay um but if it just resets it in, in the fact that it would just remove them well then that's kind of a double-edged sword as well right like you lose all your buffs but you lose all your debuffs so uh, it's kind of like entering into battle with a clean slate um so it's going to be really interesting to see how this works does it reset the timer or does it remove the buffs and debuffs entirely we'll have to wait and see uh but overall guys uh it basically when he kills them he's gonna get a really huge healing factor okay uh and then basically he gains this massive um you know buff for 15 seconds once again so it's probably gonna be worth having ho just like grind down to target to get the kill okay so now let's talk about the best commander pairings and some comparisons here to give you guys an idea as to how powerful ho is going to be okay first of all I think players are still going to do Nevsky with Joan okay I still think that that is going to be an insane combination that players continue to use I think what's going to happen here is that we will just simply be replacing Zhang Yu with uh with Ho and then William will be the secondary I struggled to find him there as you can see um William is still insanely good he is sort of like a mini Joan of Arc Prime he's he's very similar to Joan of Arc Prime in in many ways um except there's a lot of things that he also does that are amazing okay William is not going anywhere in my opinion you could have him at five 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 one and that's a very cheap investment and now you have Ho who is going to be the best possible primary for him in the open field fighting uh scenarios in my opinion okay so that's that that's my opinion on who I think the best I mean I think that's the slam dunk right I think that's the way to go um now as far as Zhang Yu goes okay this is clearly a just it's clearly a replacement okay there's no question about this um I, you know what I'm gonna do I'm just gonna go ahead and we're gonna we're just gonna sort this out okay <laughs> make this a little easier on us because here's the thing okay you look at the active skill and you might be inclined to say well Omniarch there's this is an AoE right and it's an AoE debuff okay but let me share with you guys we are going to do something a little bit wacky okay and we're gonna break out the calculator um because this is we're, we mean business today boys okay uh what I want you guys to notice here is that it's a 1700 damage factor but look at this damage dealt to each target is reduced by 25 percent for each additional target that's really big usually for AoE it's 15 percent okay you'll see that on every other commander in the game but for some reason for Zhang Yu, he's too OP and they made it 25%. Okay. So what does that mean for Ho? Well, it tells us how many targets does Zhang Yu have to hit to deal more damage than the 2,700 damage factor here. Okay. So let's break out the calculator. So of course we have 1700 that's for one target. Now, um, if he hits two targets, then the damage is reduced by 25% for each additional target, which is only one additional target, right? There's your main target and one additional target, which means you would have to multiply this, uh, by 0.75. Okay. Um, that is how much damage Zhang Yu is dealing. And then he's dealing it to two targets. So he's dealing 2,550 damage. So right off the bat, if Zhang Yu hits two targets, Ho is still dealing more total damage. Okay uh now we can see what happens when Zhang Yu hits three targets okay well that's one target and two additional targets which means it's reduced by 50 percent okay so we divide it by two that's 850 you multiply this by three targets it's the same number boys it's the same number okay now first of all that's a little weird to me I don't know if in the back end it actually is different for example with YSG or any other commander um if it hits five targets uh the difference from fourth to fifth target is five percent instead of 15 percent in terms of reduction um they don't specify this in the game notes at all but the testing and the math proves that so that is the case the reason that it does that is because if you hit five targets instead of uh, four um if they didn't change it then you would actually be dealing less total damage uh so they they micromanage that and change it in the back end uh we're not going to get into all that right now but the point is um you know with Zhang Yu I wouldn't be surprised if there was something similar where it only reduced it by a lesser amount for the 
for the third target because why would hitting two and three targets deal the same amount of total damage that makes no sense but the math is clear okay that is the math all right so with that being said there's never a scenario where zhang yu according to that math will deal more damage than hope okay there is never a scenario even though he's aoe he's still dealing less total damage with his active skill than ho is which is mind-blowing okay now yes zhang yu has a 30 percent defense reduction which is nice um ho has a 50 percent march speed reduction which is a very powerful snare okay we see this type of march speed reduction on somebody like honda tadakatsu um it's insane okay so yeah 30 percent defense reduction very good of course uh but everything else on Ho's kit is just better than Zhang Yu boys it just is it's it, he's so so good okay so my opinion here is um Zhang Yu is now going to be used in third uh, armies for cavalry um or not at all okay um only cavalry mains at this point are going to be using Zhang Yu in my opinion I just don't see I just don't see it I don't see how that you know how that wouldn't be the case um that just seems to be a, an obvious choice to me um Ho is dealing an insane amount of single target damage here in Rise of Kingdoms tons of cavalry attack we have 35 percent cavalry defense so a little bit tanky there massive skill damage buffs here as well uh healing factor for defeating targets he's got a little bit of everything okay he is extremely good I think if you are running two cavalry armies you definitely are using Ho the question is is he the first thing you should be expertising when you get season of conquest I think we'll have to wait and see some battle reports before we can make that conclusion uh but he is extremely good I will be expertising him I think he is very very powerful I'm excited for him to be in the game guys with that being said if you found this video useful drop a thumbs up on it it really helps out the channel a ton it helps get this video out into the YouTube algorithm so other rise of kingdoms players might see it if you're new here consider subscribing to the channel and clicking the bell to be notified the next time that I upload a rise of kingdoms video comment down below your thoughts on Ho are you excited for him what do you think about his kit will he be replacing Zhang Yu I would love to hear from you guys down there and with that being said guys thank you so much for watching this has been Omni Arc. I will talk to you guys again soon peace